Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hair Tube. I'd like to introduce you to Lucy. Hello. Lucy's our model for today. Um, Lucy's come in with hair nice and long. You can see a ponytail, beautiful. Um, we're gonna create something really current and relevant about mid-length. I think with Lucy, we're gonna go to around about here today. Um, so the last video we did with Lorna, um, we did something that was around the, um, the chin. Um, this is a very similar haircut in terms of the elements that we're going to be using today, but it's more adaptable to ladies with longer hair or girls with longer hair. Um, so I'm really looking forward to showing you guys how you can use the same elements uh, incorporating longer hair. Not everyone has to or not everyone wants to have short hair. So I think it's very relevant that we discuss um, options for long hair and making sure that we come up with new haircuts and new styles and new shapes that we can offer our clients because one thing I hate hearing is there's only so much you can do with long hair. There's only so much you can do with long hair if you don't put any thought into it. So hopefully today I'll show you guys something a little bit different. Um, hopefully Lucy's really excited. She's a bit quiet. I think she's a bit nervous. Um, yeah, so hopefully we do um, something really great. She enjoys it. And as always, let's get started. As I previously mentioned, um, Lucy came in early this week and had her hair coloured um, with our colour director, Michelle. Um, and you'll see from the before photo um, at the beginning of the video, and maybe we can post it now um, so you guys can have a quick look. Um, her hair was very different, so it was like very, very light on the ends. And I just found it wasn't very complimentary to her face because just with brown eyes like that, I mean, incredible brown eyes, I think you need to make sure that you've got dark next to there to complement. I know some people about contrast and then we had some light for the end. So we found that there was some existing damage. So we pre-treated the hair with Bond Ultimate um, before we colored. Then there was some lightness put in and some dark put in. And along every step we used Bond Ultimate. And I'm not sure if you guys are aware about the Bond Ultimate product, but unlike other Plex products, you actually use it in everything. So we use it in Color Sync, So Color, Color Insider. We use it in Light Master um, and any other product that we feel um, we want to preserve the condition or protect the bonds in the hair. So um, Lucy's hair had a lot of existing um, light, lightness in it. It was quite dry, so we used the product. And although her hair is naturally curly, you can see it's still quite um, healthy to maintain the condition. Um, but the, where the majority of the damage is on the ends, we're cutting all that off anyway. So we're going to cut, start with the ends first. We're going to do the shape in the front, and then we're going to do the layering. Um, uh, I think um, this haircut might be a little bit different because we're going to go for a centre part as a primary place to wear the hair, not a secondary place. And then we'll be able to part on the side as an alternative. So um, we're going to start with the back, from the front to the back. The details of the colour and how Michelle did it will be in the description of the video at the bottom. Um, and if you guys have any questions about the colour, um, you guys can ask and we can definitely answer those questions for you. Um, no problem, we'll get back to you as quick as we can. How you feeling Lucy, good? Yes, I'm so excited. I'm really excited for you. Again, this is a, a really, um, um, popular um, commercial variant of many long haircuts you've probably seen. Um, one thing I know when educating for Matrix, I meet so many beautiful hairdressers. It's, uh, it's incredible how many beautiful people I've met in the last two years with my journey with Matrix. But at the end of my workshop, you always get one or two people just want to hang, hang back and ask a few questions. And it's actually something I really love to do. And a lot of them say, the biggest problem they face in the salon at the moment is they have people coming in um, with photos that they've seen on the internet and celebrity haircuts and they ask for them and they just don't know how they're created. So I know with um, um, the last video you guys absolutely love with CJ, we use Claire Underwood as an inspiration. Um, I think the haircut we're doing today on Lucy is very similar to how Carly Kloss has worn her hair a few times. Um, so um, if anyone comes in 
asked their hair to be like Carly Kloss. Well, hopefully, I actually don't know what her hair looks right now, but she changes it quite often, which I love. Um, but I know that she had a hair like exactly like this at one point, because when I spoke to Lucy about coming along to um, collaborate with us so we can create some great videos, um, that was one of the reference images that I gave her. So I guess it might be like a long version of her hair, which is cool. All right, let's get right into it, eh? Again, um, the last video that we put up, um, if you remember, was with a really beautiful girl named Lorna, and we spoke a lot about making sure that you take your time with the baseline because it makes the haircuts look really expensive, and this is no different. Actually, in long hair, it's even more important. So. Just my chair. Cool. Chin down a little bit, Lucy. Thank you. You ready? Yeah. Hey? <laughs> yeah. you look amazing. You look even better. I'm just going to tuck this in. It's beautiful. Not reinventing the wheel. Good strong baselines are something that I would imagine you're all capable of doing. For those of you watching closely, you can see that there is a lot of curl in Lucy's hair. And we just released a lot of the weight by adjusting the length and it started to go quite curly, which is great. We need to make sure that we work in that functional 45 minute time frame for commercial. We make sure that we can give great haircuts and colors to people and uh, in the right amount of time. So when you're doing your sectioning, make sure that it's going to give you an accurate result, but you don't want to over section the hair because it just makes you inefficient. Remember all the tools I'm using, scissors and combs. You can find them on my website. You guys often ask for them, so we uh, spent a little bit of time and cash to make sure we could get a steady supply. For those of you who've already bought them, I hope you're enjoying them. Give me some feedback if you've um, done a couple of haircuts. Tell me how they went. because they're Australian and they are of a very, very high quality. How you going Lucy, all right? Yeah. Good. For the last section, I'm gonna throw a bit of a spanner in the works. I'm actually going to use the clippers. You guys have seen me do this before.
I just find sometimes using the clipper is just really good for bulk hair removal when you're taking lots of length off. And then we can go back. Scissor underneath, just lifting out. Beautiful, falls nice and heavy. Look at the movement in it, nice. It must feel a bit lighter, yeah. but it's still so long. Your hair's so long, Lucy. Just chin down just a little bit. Perfect, thank you. A little bit too far. Yeah. So we really want to make sure this baseline's super crispy. I know I bang on about being efficient, but this is what makes your haircut look better than their competitors. Those super strong, accurate ends. People like, oh my God, your hair cuts so straight on the ends. It's so, you know, well cut. That's why you can charge more. So I go over the ends multiple times. And make sure that you get that perfect sharp line. All right, let's move on to the next section. That's what they say. That's right. Could you look in the mirror, please? That one, yeah. Really make sure you get that cape flat for when we're doing the sides. Look at this beautiful wave starting to come out. Incredible. Again, just make sure there's nothing caught behind the ear. You good there, Jimmy?
really make sure they get these sharp. Like, never ever rush. I think it's just just makes it that that little bit more special. You know, back to what I said in the intro about, oh, there's only so much you can do with long hair. Well, if you take the time and and do those really nice strong bass lines, then just that just that element alone makes that long haircut that bit more special. And at the end of the day, it's about impressing our clients so that they come back and they have their hair cut with us and tell all their friends and, and um, build our clientele and our businesses. Could you look over your right shoulder for me? Again, just ensure that you haven't missed behind the ear. I actually really like cutting hair, air dried. Like you can see that, although Lucy's hair looks quite fluffy, obviously it has no product in it, other than the Biolage. Uh, we used the uh, Color Last Shampoo Conditioner and obviously the Biolage Hydrosaur Spray. And then we'll build on the products later on. But I like seeing it dry naturally so that we can identify the, the movement. How you feeling with the new length? I like it. Yeah, good. <laughs> Lucy was a little bit worried she's going to walk out of here with a really short A-line bob or something like that. <laughs> Not short at all. But he's for you. <laughs> when hair travels from different points of the head, when it goes back to its natural fall, it's always good to have a quick look. It's always, you always find that, that little bit of graduation that comes from touching it with your hands. It's really important again to cut that out so we keep that super sharp line. Lucy, when your hair dries, is it quite curly? Yeah. yeah. Especially underneath. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so we discussed we were going to focus on um, working with the uh, center parting for Lucy. Could you close your eyes for me, please? It's starting to get, I know I've said to you before, I don't mind working with the hair air dried a little bit, but we also need to make sure that when we've got the comb going through it, it's comfortable for our clients and that we can get control. So I'm just giving a little mist of my magic water, as I call it. Now we're gonna start from one side and we're gonna target, I think the, the last video we spoke about, um, lawn, the shape in the front of Lorna's haircut was like a, a curtain fringe. This is a similar principle, but it's executed differently. Um, but what we wanna do is, Cut a shape that's complementary to um, Lucy's uh, face shape and her eyes, and just a little bit of shape in the front, but not cutting into here. Want to make sure that we maintain the, the strength on the ends. And um, this will be really nice because it'll actually bring some of that curl out for her as well. So 
So I've had many conversations with various hairdressers who um, struggle to comprehend this technique. Um, I call this long graduation. Um, the reason why it's long graduation is because if the hair's cut below 90 degrees, it has to be graduation. But some people say, well, is it 90 degrees to the face or to the head? It's just that if it's below 90 degrees, which for me it's 90 degrees, it's a right angle. So here, right angle, it's graduation. So this for me is a long graduation. So I'm just gonna work with just a little rectangle first. And it's only, actually, it probably is layering this time. Yeah, it probably is right on 90 degrees. And then we wanna really super over direct this. The most important thing is you cut parallel to your parting. So that means make sure that you bring the hair that's in front of the ear below the temple back to the same point. And there's our end. Don't cut it. We don't want to cut that point out. Guys, you get a better angle of this side now. So take a little bit from the from this side, just as a guide. Again, making sure we over direct. And I'm cutting over my shoulder this way, not out there towards you guys. This way, really making sure that we over direct. When cutting long hair, there's two ways you can retain length. You can over direct, and you can project. So you can project it further away from zero, like this, which means it falls really wispy, or you can project it at 90 degrees, so you get some identifiable, quite strong foundation, and then over direct it so we don't end up cutting all that hair off at the bottom there. So that's why I over direct it. And there it is there. We wanna make sure we don't cut that off. Bang here and here must stay. And you can see, creating a concave shape around the face. Make sure we don't cut into that guide. See that nice shape being formed there. One thing to note about this particular technique is it will layer the sides and the back of the hair as well. So you need to be mindful of that. Look at the wave that's starting to come out, it's beautiful. can see the effort that Michelle's gone to with the colour as I'm projecting it. And it's probably really important to mention where we got the inspiration from this. Um, we got the inspiration for the colour um, 
for um, Lucy from the strobing technique that we've developed at Matrix. Um, there's a lot of amazing people behind the creation of these color techniques and we use that as our inspiration. So um, this is uh, color strobe. If you head over to the Matrix website, um, you'll be able to see a more in detail um, explanation of how strobing actually works, how you can apply the techniques, because it can, you can do candy strobe. So for example, um, the video we did last week with Lorna, you could um, have a candy strobe in Lorna's hair. So platinum blonde and just do some pink or some mauve or a little bit of blue or aqua on the ends. Um, with um, Lucy, we've strobed around her face to bring out the, the color in her skin. Um, and again, at the bottom of the video, we'll have the details of all the color we did, but the color is a matrix. The color technique we used is a exclusive matrix technique. And if you wanna learn more about color strobing, no matter what country you're in, you need to get in touch with your matrix agent and find out where their color education is being held and get along because there are some majorly talented people that work within the matrix network um, and they are very creative and very innovative. Um, so thank you to everyone at Matrix for the inspiration for our color. And thank you to Michelle, the color director here at Axis. You have absolutely nailed this. It's incredible, incredible. Really making sure we're hitting those angles. Can you guys see that? Let me just spin quickly so everyone can see on the inside the, proje the projection and the detail is really important. So you can see how over directed I'm making it. What I might just do quickly is spin you guys, spin Lucy around so you guys can see how far back I'm going with the sectioning. So when you're going through this, if, you, if you're struggling to control the hair while it's drying, Again, just give it a little mist, but it's something I would, I would challenge you guys to try is working with naturally drying hair. It's something that, it's a technique that I've been developing and working on and I'm teaching exclusively to the Matrix Network, the entire philosophy behind it, um, especially for when you're working with hair with movement. It's so, so good. And the reason why it's so good is because you can see as we're going through, we're starting to identify where the movement is and we're not gonna run into any, 
any issues with cutting it too short or leaving it too long um, because when it dries obviously brings the movement out and we all have uh, in our younger years you know stretched that crown too tight and made it spring up too high in the back or cut that fringe too short because we're unable to identify the natural movement in the hair and what this does is allows for better identification of the movement. Don't go looking for hair if it's not there to cut. When you run out, you run out. No hair to cut at the top there. But we just have a few little hairs that are coming in from the back. And this will be the last section we pull from the back to the front. The last video we did with Lorna, I showed you this technique that we're about to do. It's um, in principle identical, but obviously there's a few things that are different because of the length of the hair. So let's get you put your head forward, Lucy, for me. Let's give it a shake. Thank you. So the last video we did, we did a triangle. This we're not going to do the triangle. We're just going to I guess this is increased layering. So I'm just gonna take a centimeter or two centimeter wide section down the front, including these little hairs, which have now created these beautiful little bangs in the front. And again, we're gonna use a um, shark fin slice cut where we over direct it quite dramatically. And then, once we've got our little guide through there, we're just gonna take a diagonal forward section right over the temple. Pick up our guideline again. And this is where you start to see how beautiful the shape in the front's going to be. When you're doing haircuts like this in front of your clients and they see all this hair coming off, it takes a lot of courage and confidence. So, be brave and trust that the technique will get you the result you want. Look at that. very intelligent mathematician told me once, the numbers don't lie. If the technique's solid, you can't make mistakes provided you understand how to execute it correctly. So grab a mannequin head, doll's head, dummy head, whatever you want to call it. I still do it when I need to practice things that I'm trying to be innovative with and uh, experiment on those because uh, Mannequins don't complain. <laughs> but I uh, better get a ride on Lucy, otherwise she might complain. No, you wouldn't. No. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> wait for it, wait for the drop. 
Look at that strobe. Look at that strobe. Look at it through here, look. Beautiful. All right, and we want to repeat on the other side. I know you're cooking under there. One thing you have to explain to your clients when doing this is, I'm sorry the hair's on your face, and I know it's quite itchy and uncomfortable, but I promise the result's gonna be worth it. Um, because for a lot of clients, it's, you know, some people are fine, but I know a lot of people get quite annoyed with the hair on their face. They're constantly <laughs> like blowing it up at you, and you're just like, can you please not blow your hair in my eyes? It's not very nice, so. Um, it's probably worth mentioning because if you're doing a new technique, not only will it feel foreign for your client, but then all of a sudden they start to become a little bit uncomfortable because it's itchy on their face. Um, you don't want to lose the confidence of your, of your client. Hit this way, gorgeous. Thank you. So again, we've got to find that shark fin. There it is. See it under there? Really exaggerate that and over direct it. Look at that. Stunning. All of a sudden, it's become very easy to comb Lucy's hair. All that Bondi Beach on your Instagram, all those weekends of Bondi. Swimming and surfing in the sun, the salt, the sand, the damage that it causes on your hair is real. Now this is the tough part. I always find this part difficult, no matter how many times I've done it, is we need to try and get all the hair up to the one point. So be patient. It's all right, Lucy? Yeah. Not being too rough? Yeah. Good. If the shorter pieces fall out, don't go chasing them, it's fine. This is for the majority of the hair that's all gonna fall on that one design line. You need to soften it a little bit and you have to soften it in the same way that you projected it when you cut that angle. Look at that, that shark thing, look at that. And then, don't worry about the little pieces falling out. We want this bulk here. Just soften. We spoke about uh, many times about texturizing shears, thinning scissors. Um, for me, they are never to be used in hair with movement or long hair. Um, and I spend lots of time point cutting because it just um, it makes the hair frizzy. Wow. So 80% of the haircut's done. With this particular haircut, I'm actually gonna give Lucy a nice blowout today. Um, but you could see she could um, put some smooth setter in it, scrunch it in, um, and wear it curly and quite natural because you know we spent that time, let me just pull this out of the way so we can get a bit of a, a look of what I'm talking about. So. Yeah, so you can see the silhouette in here and the shape and the movement. So you can absolutely put in some airy builder, some smooth setter, scrunch dry, let it dry naturally and work with the natural movement, but we're gonna blow it out today. Spin you around, let's check the front.
Let's check our shark fin. That wasn't even there, it was up here. Good. Spin around this way. I'll tell you what. Maybe if we could rewind and go back, we might have blown Lucy's hair out first and then done the dry cut. But I know that her hair is going to dry better naturally because I took that time to comb through it to make sure that I was watching the hair dry and we were cutting it to its natural movement. Whereas this way, probably would have been 65, 70% there. I think for me, it would have been a little bit more hit and miss, especially when it comes to what we're after and that's wash and wear hair, right? Because the modern woman is very busy and although the blowout is beautiful, um, it's something that uh, would be a special occasion or maybe once a week thing for work um, rather than getting up every morning and freshly blow drying hair. This is such a luxurious look. Looks so expensive. Color strobe, beautiful blowout, the shape, that, that beautiful curtain bang in the front, stunning. Just checking this back part because I struggled just with the underneath, um, just because it was starting to get a little bit um, caught and I just wanna make sure that I got that shape right. Yep, you can see how it's falling there. The beautiful thing about this layering is it works with straight and curly hair. Look at that now, there's no, no knots anymore. The only where it's knotting is where I've left cut hair inside there from my last section. It's beautiful. Bond Ultimate is definitely um, worth the investment, guys. I mean, I know there's other Plex products on the market but when it comes to one that you can use in every single color in the salon and get a real tangible benefit one that you can not only see but you can actually feel um, and I've used a lot of them um, for me bond ultimate and I'm not just I'm honestly not just saying that um, we were already been using a Plex system for well wow, about maybe two years um, before um, L'Oreal Matrix had one and um, what we now know is that um, there's a reason why they waited and the reason why Matrix waited to release Bond Ultimate um, is because they wanted to make sure that they weren't just plagiarizing and releasing something that was a rebranded versions or versions of what was in the marketplace but something truly unique um, that when a hairdresser uses it, they're like, I can sell this to my client because you know, this is a real product that I know at the end of their, their service, they're gonna see and feel the difference. All right, last section here, guys. Picking it all up at once. One big section. Gently lifting it. And this is where we really create that kick there in the bottom because we're projecting this out at 45, at 90. So we've done the front to the back, brought the back, connected the front in the back so we ended up taking out even though we created that fin we ended up taking it out we've created it through here and now we're coming through here all at once you'll see it now I'm just going to spin Lucy around because I need to make sure that I'm in the middle of the head yep chin down a little bit gorgeous thank you here we go Again, if the hair's falling out because it doesn't reach, don't go chasing it. Here we go. Ooh, look at that big corner. That's what we need to get out. And we're gonna chip that away very gently. The 
Yep, got it. So I guess rather than um, cutting it out completely, we've just softened it. So we create that little bit of variation in there. Look at that. That color just, it just releases the color beautifully. All right. I think we're done. Did I check this side? I think I did. Let me just triple check. Did I check this side? You guys should be up to date on that. We should have live, live interaction. One thing I want to say is if you guys want me to actually do color, you want to see me coloring hair, believe it or not, I can color hair, and I'm happy to do a couple of color models for you guys. It wouldn't be like this. It would actually be in a step-by-step -step color format because to color a model from start to finish in real time, going slow, um, it just doesn't work. I've tried it before. It needs to be sort of like a time lapse. Cutting's a little bit differently because in the interest of time with the models that we generally do. The hair's been pre-coloured. Just checking this last side. Yeah, I did do it. It's always good to triple double check. Okay, Miss Lucy. Miss Lucy, the new Lucy. Makes me want to wet your hair and make it curly. How do you feel? Does it feel good? It feels so different. Yeah. Feels good. Have a look in this mirror over here. I might just slide you out a little bit. I really love this curtain bang we've been doing in the front because look, just by shifting that part straight away, you can see that strobe that Michelle's done around the face. Really beautiful. I mean, this is a very, very much a luxurious look once it's blow dried. Um, and similarly with Lorna we did last week, I think that um, if Lucy were to dry her hair in a natural way um, and use some of the great products like Messy Maker, maybe a bit of Airy Builder, some Texture Builder, I think that um, she can have a, you know, a little bit more casual look. So what we might do, is we've seen it smooth. We might just put a little bit of Messy Maker in it and we'll dry it in. We just want to try and get a little bit of texture in there. Real quick, head back. Let's see if we can just bring some of that natural movement back out and I'll just gently dry it back off your face. Because it is very, very polished that way. And this way we just get that little bit, yeah, you can see it now, now it's starting to come to life. That's more me. <laughs> Colour's great, cut's cool. Went from that one length, um, Ponytail it was all one length. It was down to here. Where was it? Like down there. It was super long. You guys, again, you'll see before and after photo. Now we've got a cut in the hair that's, um, how would you say, it's released the colour, shows off the colour. You can see the strobing around the face. Um, beautiful colour, beautiful cut. I think Lucy looks amazing. She did before, she does now. Hope you guys really love it. And uh, again, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks again to our amazing, amazing friend, Matrix. Um, we are able now to bring you regular quality content, thanks to them. So whichever country you're from, please reach out to your Matrix agent, use the amazing products that are Matrix, and make sure you get on board 
Um, they're a great bunch of people and they've really supported me. Remember, if you support them, they support us. We can create more content for you. So until next time, it's bye from me. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you. Look amazing. I feel good. Do you feel good? Yeah. Should we, just before we go, can you give it a bit of a Lucy zhuzh? You know what I mean? Girls have got their thing with it. That's better. It's more Lucy now. It's fun. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And until we see you guys again, it's... Bye.